who was on the who was on the call. Um, we do appreciate your time, so we'll we'll keep this uh, you know short and sweet for everyone. Um, the Pledge of Allegiance. I know we've been uh, kind of skipping through those uh, throughout the last few meetings. Um, if that's something you know you all would like to continue to do, we can we can do that. Um, maybe we can come up with something you know a little shorter to to honor uh, take place of that that honoring. Uh, for roll call, um, General, can you, can you please do the roll call? All right, I've been doing the roll call. Uh, people have been um, popping in. Presenting him. Uh, John Porter is on. Uh, James Kirby Snydman has yet to log on. Morgan is here. Priscilla has yet to join us, and Sethi is here. Great. From the public, I would like to uh, make any comments there. Maybe I should make a comment. <laughs> yeah, a public member. Nice to see you all, everybody. Um, I'm really um, excited to put you know, see some really great programs put in place. Uh, the city really needs a food system. It is what every city, especially cities our size, are looking at. Um, up to a, a level uh, on Poverty that has, uh, that has come into play because of the pandemic. So it's brought it up to a level of a, of a, a um, so I do expect that there's going to be a lot of, um, infrastructure grants that are gonna, uh, of various types for various ways of exploring, expanding local food sustainability. And I, um, I'm hoping that LCUAS will take um, uh, time to respond to some of those grants and, and hopefully uh, get a word of them. Thank you. Thank you, Vigana. Um, I'll definitely go into a little bit more as to why um, I've invited uh, Viviana today. She's instrumental, really, and, and really this, this organization is uh, was created a lot from her, her direction and from her guidance and really uh, exposing us to the idea that this is possible. So uh, I want to thank you, Viviana. Um, thank you. For the for <laughs> you all are the advocates. <laughs> you are the main people. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. I know you're always humble about it, so, you know, we'll, we'll leave it there for now. And, you know, I, I do uh, appreciate everything you do for the community and, and, and for making this organization possible. With, with that, you know, I'd like to move forward to the uh, approval of the minutes um, so that we can uh, approve those and uh, continue on to some of, the, some of the items I'd like to bring up today on the, on the President's report. Has everyone had a chance to uh, review them? Very lean, very uh, short and to the point. Uh, you know, I do have every uh, every meeting in a video, and uh, so I try not to take too much of anybody's time to public access or through YouTube. Definitely. 
we can discuss that outside of this meeting. And uh, but I think that works uh, just fine. Like you said, it's all public. So if you want to go back to any of the uh, if they were discussed, it's all available. Um, we it's on the public access channel, right, on YouTube. Um, some of them are. Uh, the last one was not, but I, I'll get with Jerry and make sure that they're all on there. Priscilla showed up, so we. Welcome, Priscilla. Okay. Second. All right, so with that, I, I guess I'll motion to, or somebody needs to motion to approve the minutes. Anita did. Okay. Latency. All those in favor? Aye. Any against? Aye. Okay, any against? Motion carries. Uh, minutes are approved. Moving on to the uh, President's report. So today, um, there, there are three items I wanted to bring up. These are certain barriers that are in the way of uh, what said, certain uh, being able to, to move forward with the program. Um, one being the, the lease agreement. We need to, we need to as a board, can you come to um, a decision, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, just as we sent the, the lease agreement a little earlier today. So review that. I think we need maybe just, you know, a day or two to, to review that. Maybe, you know, uh, send that to the attorney's office. And although I think they, they're going to make it in their favor. Um, just review. If you have any comments, please uh, respond on the, the email that was sent out. And we'll try to get those approved, you know, hopefully by early next week. So that way it can be sent over to the city manager's office and we can, uh, we can get that lease agreement signed. Once we get that lease agreement signed, then Jose can, can start applying for grants. And he's already started identifying some of them. Some of them are really in over a hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. They're the pretty sizey grants. So we need, we really need this to move forward. So please, you know, make your comments today and tomorrow so we can move forward. Um, the, uh, the second thing is, is, is a volunteer program. Um, that Jose uh, and I started talking about uh, creating. We want to uh, create a program where he needs volunteers right now. Right? He has about maybe two or three active volunteers per week. Maybe you know they rotate. Um, he says he needs at least eight to ten on average to maintain the, the current garden. They've been really improving the, the produce and the inventory of what we have. Um, so thank you, Jose, for for working diligently with with the resources that you have. Um, in order to try to get some more volunteers, um, we suggested maybe uh, investing in some of these uh, volunteers, right, and, and creating a program around this. So, they volunteer for the next, you know, three months or so every week. Then we can um, invest in a starter kit that's anywhere between two hundred to four hundred dollars for them, so they can have their own home garden. And with his consultation, he'll make sure that that you know the beds are good and, and um, that they have a sustainable garden. So. I think that's a that's a great program. Jose is going to develop that, you know, over the next uh, next few weeks, and that way, uh, if there's any costs that need to be approved by the board, uh, we'll another reason I invited Viviana today uh, to to join us for this meeting uh, and really to to be in, in, uh, more directly involved with the LCAS. Um, I've invited her to, to become the chair of a new committee, a uh, new advisory committee, which is the uh, Loretta Food Policy Council Committee for the uh, Loretta Center for Urban Agriculture and Sustainability. So I'd like to welcome now uh, Viviana to, to introduce what uh, food policy councils do uh, around the country and uh, what she has in mind for her, for this organization. Um, welcome, Councilman. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Nice to see you. Yourself. I heard y'all were having a meeting. I said, I want to go. Um, unfortunately, I can't go, but I can at least see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Thank you for joining us. You're instrumental on this. You have been an entire way. Well, whatever I can do to help, you know I'm here to help. Yes, please so, introduce uh, uh, the Food Policy Councils. Okay, so uh, when LCUAS was created uh, several years ago now, um, part of the reason it was created was to also help manage a uh, Food Policy Council. Uh, what that meant is essentially 
uh, invite we came to do the workshops you some of you were part of that those workshops you know I was flabbergasted that touched food in some way or another I thought it was only two food banks or three food banks but in some way uh, touch food for in, in, a, in the manner that help uh, for the for homeless people or And so the idea was to have month not working in silos. A lot of these organizations, uh, it was shown at those workshops that some of them didn't even know the others existed. Um, duplicating efforts. And really believed that a food policy council would be helpful in not doing that. And so that's what, you know, of course that's what happens when there's, uh, there's different organizations working in silos and there's no kind of way to get them to communicate with each other. And with food sustainability, it's really important for those organizations to have a way to talk and plan reaching uh, or reaching milestones in how they would uh, be able to work better in the city uh, and deliver better services in the city. Um, along the same lines at the same time, um, also there was a great study done by a Harvard uh, part of What Works Cities which was a Bloomberg initiative that the city was a part of. It was one of a hundred mid-sized cities that was that was uh, chosen for the portal together um, and to get um, the be able to work uh, seamlessly between departments sharing data and information so that decisions and have better uh, ability to share that information with, uh, with the and so the, the Food Policy Council uh, is essentially uh, the ability to to plan together um, and LCUAS is uh, the, the response I would say not response the meetings to um, take meeting notes, make sure that uh, those meeting notes are getting to everybody there, and then following up and having another, you know, uh, those meetings and just helping them organize uh, in that fashion. Uh, what I've agreed to do uh, when Roger asked me to do this, I what I those people back to the table, the ones that got together for the workshop. The workshop, by the way, was was uh, uh, done by Mark Winnie. Mark Winnie uh, is the educator and, and manager of food policy councils across the United States. He also uh, worked for John, or he's part of the John Hops, Hopkins Sustainability Institute, and and uh, and it was just a synchronicity that that the 
that came together. Through, the, uh, through inviting Mark Winnie down, he was down for three days, and, and uh, we still uh, implementation requirements that he had helped put together for that. So, willing to um, help organize all of that. The only thing that I would need. Uh, your executive director to, or somebody to take uh, meeting notes and email list of the of the board, and just make sure that we have a place to. At the health department, if right now we don't, we can't do that. We can meet. By you know, we can meet um, as a everything going well with the pandemic. Um, that um, All that would be required right now, if there's any action items or anything that would require board approval for, you know, it would be brought to the board for your all's approval. Uh, we are willing to come and do a uh, report every month. Uh, and if there's an action item, I'll, I'll you know. Advisory committee. And uh, it doesn't take any action beyond the board. The board is the ultimate uh, driver of all all things in, in this committee. Uh, the The idea is to end up with three and five year plan that this commission can work on. It's a, a written document that would um, help them have milestones of of how to reach a more sustainable uh, it could be anywhere from innovation to you know getting the right policy in place at the at, at the health department that would allow They, they have at the end of the day that isn't used instead of throwing it out to be able to package it, in, which cities have done. Um, that doesn't exist here. At least I don't think so. Am I right? Um, I'm sorry? I think maybe get with the, the health department on the, the health Do you know, you know, do you know if, if the uh, restaurants have to throw out their food at the end of the day? Can I, 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 don't, I don't think that they can give it to organizations. I'd have to check with the sanitarians on that. Um, I can, let me text one of them, see if he can respond. Give it away. We have to. We have to throw it out. Oh, okay. So that, that's 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 the policy. That's the yeah, we can't I get really, uh, so. I, I would have to like check. Sorry. Okay. So, anyways, th that's the kind of thing that the food policy council would help uh, figure out, and you know, those are the kinds of things that they would bring to you and help develop the policy for that and the advocacy for it at the city, just to. And the, and the health department to make that happen. Uh, it's really worked in other cities. And there's so much poverty here that it's a shame that a lot of this food goes to waste. So do um, you have any questions? I'd be happy to answer. No, I'm going to have to. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to uh, hop off uh, of the call right here. And uh, I'll give a treasurer report uh, the next uh, at our next meeting. Um, the, uh, but anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm going to have to hop off.
This is Bobby, by the way. Hey, Bobby. Hello. Bobby. That's alright. If even if you want, just email us what your report was. You know, that way, I don't know if we need it for this agenda or anything like that. So do you, you know, I'll set, so okay. you guys can uh, just in case. On, on Monday, because I, I just got my, I, I'm out of town. I just got to where I'm going, and, I, and uh, it'll be busy for the next couple of days. Alrighty? All good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for joining us, Lightfoot. I appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. You mentioned something about you know food unless the food is sealed, so you know, maybe you'll have some color on that. Um, hopefully you'll. Uh, but I mean, that's the idea of this, right? Is, is using the the insights from everyone on this board and from other boards to really figure out what we can do uh, collectively. Um, so you know, thank, you, you, guys, thank you for for green tea. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a Execution is key. Oh, I see you I'm sorry. Sure. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I understood. Um, so you're the, the connector for all of these other food-related um, organizations like ours to help promote, um, uh, you know, policies like you mentioned. Sorry, like meeting notes are... Um, create the policies to to alleviate the, or to bring those opportunities to fruition? Uh, uh, no, I, the Food Policy Council lives under Laredo. This coalesce. Um, it is a... Um, and it's really a, a function of LCUAS to help this happen because so much of LC, what LCUAS's mission has to do with, um, you know, getting these these organizations to be able to work together more efficiently. But it's not your responsibility to, like, uh, you know, you are not the Food Policy Council. They will be, but they're an advisory committee to you all, and uh, at least for now, I mean, I suppose they can, in bigger cities, they offshoot and they form their own other thing, And but right now, what LCUAS was tasked for way back then was to do this council, help it get started, and uh, essentially uh, get it, and, and my effort is simply from City Makery again to, um, to help it get started because it's so important to have it as part of the as uh you can't really have local food sustainability of all the they're not talking to each other and they don't have a plan of of how to um uh really activate uh sustainable food sustainability in the city and as you Well, because um, you know they need a place to help them just be organized. In other words, be there. Uh, send the email notices out. Call them. Hey, make sure to come in. That kind lifting really of putting the the plan together and that's what I'm the resources that are needed the research all of that to help but uh, since uh, LCUAS had not been funded Most of the executive directors are still there. They'll remember what happened, and you know, now now we're starting. Good question. Yes, it did. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, and I do remember when you guys brought in Mark Winnie. I went to the 
the lecture that he did at yeah. CAMU. It was so informative. So. Yeah. and the city manager at the time had had everybody there. He made sure they were all invited. They, and every department head was there. It was really great. Um, it's three, two days, two and a half days. Uh, I guess um, but we'll be able to react to this. Thank you again for, for um, you know, really helping us understand uh, what the effort is. And I appreciate you accepting the invitation. And, you know, we have been talking about it for, I think, the last two years. So I'm glad it's uh, come full circle. And now we have some funds and we can really move this forward. Um, with that, you know, I'd like to move forward with the uh, vault to, we're going to skip the treasurer's report. Uh, Bobby will be sending that uh, via email. And uh, we'll be moving on to the volunteer report. So to Morgan. Zero. Again, I know, always talking. Um, yeah, I think the only thing I had was, I know last time we had talked about having some of the board members come to the garden, visit it, kind of see, get your hands a little bit dirty, hopefully, um, you know, maybe take a plant home or something. Um, but we had some questions about group sizes, and I know the city was considering a double mask policy. So just kind of, that was my question um, as far as volunteers. everyone so um that was gonna be my question to the board today it was just making sure um precautions are we suggesting that they do take extra precautions are we limiting um at that and i know it's not really a report it's more of a question but um that's gonna um i'll leave I, that to uh, get them all. or sorry council well let me see we're outside since you all are outside the double mask uh, in essence goes there are people that wear gaiters or handkerchiefs or etc and so the the concept of the double mask is is um, in essence that layer of protection that is needed because sometimes these gaiters and 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 handkerchiefs they don't do the trick for you uh, we're talking about double mass uh, at city um, um, inside city buildings and uh, and and of course this is outside, so you know. But uh, double mask, I'm sure if we go three or four masks, you get an even extra protection. Okay, perfect. So we're just going to continue that the the you know masking your face and your nose, um, being outside, practicing social distancing. Um, and then we'll, we're going to keep it. I think right now we're, we're saying 10 volunteers. I mean, it hasn't been a problem, but um, 10 volunteers at a time. That's kind of our, our policy, what we've been practicing. Um, now that TAMU is back, I know a lot of our volunteers come from the faculty and staff of TAMU, so I do anticipate some more people coming soon. Um, and then... Um, and then my only thing with that was just going to be request that you guys... In a, in a more meaningful way um, before making that opportunity public. Speaking of volunteers, uh, the veterans group that is over on the other side, they're super happy to be included. They'll be willing to participate, but there's they they need help they need guidance and and i think this is the perfect group to to guide them. that that's some of these um stuff for, uh, but yeah it'd be it'd be a good idea to or, or allowing them in there their garden looks great too yeah Maybe after the meeting, uh, my emails on the, the in the invite. I think. Okay. Uh, information, and I'll definitely reach out because their guide looks great as it is. So. 
Oh, I think he just is he here. He just dropped off for some. Can't see anyone. Um, maybe while we wait for uh, Jose, I could give my quick little report. I apologize. Um, for that. Well, the good thing is I don't, I don't really have to, uh, too much to report anyway, other than. We do have one spot on the board available for um, of help from Tammy U professors. So if uh, perhaps you could, you know, speak to some of them. We do have a, a like I said, I, we do have an open board uh, space. If anybody would be interested, um, you know, we need to fill that spot. Miss Frank, Viviana. Uh, on this note, I uh, spoke to Roseanne Palacios at TEMU, and uh, she suggested that the organization send a letter okay. uh, to her um, uh, with the mission, vision, all of that stuff. You can grab that off of the bylaws and, um, so, and ask for, uh, you know, somebody. Okay. That, but, but, but she may suggest. I'll, I'll reach out to Roseanne. I know her well. She was uh, my English teacher back at my son of Spain days. So, um, yeah. She really wants to. Um, I got nothing else. Okay. Thank you, Guillermo. Apologize for skipping you. Last time it was Morgan, so I'll get the hang of it eventually. Um, executive uh, Director's Report, what's that? Thanks for coming back. Oh, yes, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm not disconnected. Oh, okay. I'm going to share my screen with you. Operators are activities for January. We have a social media campaign uh, ongoing. Yesterday, two days ago, we, we shot a marketing video. We did a short collaboration with Chef Raquel de Hoyos, she's one of our gardeners, and La Bodega del Pueblo, which is her small business. And we, we introduced our garden activities and, and what we have been doing. The, this video is actually is right now in, in mass production, right? Hopefully we'll have it we'll have it uh, ready for next week. Um, during January, I attended two conferences virtually, of course. The first one, uh, the third Hispanic Texas Hispanic Farmer Rancher and Rancher Conference, hosted by UTRGV, and the second one, the Tough Guy Annual Conference. This. This is this, this second conference actually ends in February. So we are having sessions Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, evenings. In terms of garden maintenance, our garden of law, uh, which is the, the trellis plot in the garden, has been cleared, completely clear and, and planted. Our mindful garden, garden, our second biggest plot has been cleared and we are uh, currently starting uh, planting for spring. Our winter and fall, fall and winter harvest season continues. We we're going to talk about that in a minute. And uh, in our greenhouse, we have approximately uh, 250, 300 plants uh, to ready to, to to get planted or either send it to the farmers market and people who work in. We're going to talk about that too. We have an inventory of 70, approximately 70 different plants flowers and vegetables. Uh, we have, uh, I think we have a strong uh, relationship with the farmer market right now. We have been participating for four months in a row. In a row. Let's talk about our curbside sales. We launched a curbside sale campaign for the past two Saturdays with good, really good numbers. We have sold uh, like around $200 per, per event and actually we experience that we have experienced that people pre-order by direct message through social media and 
in Luxembourg Institute. So today it's about that. I want to mention the, the, the program to recruit between eight to ten people. Uh, I'm thinking of this name for the for the program, yeah, for planting to harvesting at home in gardening crash course. The idea is to get help from eight to ten people, community individuals who can come to our garden and work and learn at the same time for 12 sessions, right? At the end of the program, we we can meet with them to, to start their own uh, gardens at home. And I'm thinking a small garden, right? Like a raised bed, 47 inches by 35, something like that, that we have been looking at at some local stores. And we, we will provide them the consultation, the, the raised bed, and soil and plants from our garden, right? Uh, in terms of grants, I applied to the 2021 National Joint Farmers Grant Coalition Grant. Uh, my plans are to apply to these other two plans during the next two weeks. We have a deadline for February, early February and late February. And the federal and state grants will become available in, in, in spring, right? Let's talk about the, our harvest season. These are our numbers for the farmers market uh, sales that we have been having. You probably want to see this uh, in another time. This will illustrate what Bobby will uh, report to us early next, next Monday, right? Uh, these are the numbers of our curbside sales. Last week we sold 200, 204. And last Saturday we sold 170. And just, just a couple of days ago when we were shooting the video, Two persons uh, walked in because they saw us there, and and they 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 purchased plants and and, and produce on site. These these numbers I report all these numbers to Bobby, of course. Now I would like to open the discussion with the board right now, and uh, so I would like to respectfully request your support, your guidance, uh, in order to achieve the, the signed lease agreement. If you uh, have more questions about the the crash course or the the it's Friday that we wanna launch to get eight to ten people in the garden, and of course the other main thing that um, or concern that I have is that now that we have uh, harvested, we face the storage problem, right? Because actually one of our Gardeners had to take the tomato, 20, 20 to 30 uh, pounds of tomato to her fridge because we don't have a fridge uh, installed in, 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 our, in our garden, right? So I can, I can open this discussion to, the, to you. And uh, Roger? Uh, definitely. Well, you know, I was hoping uh, to ask Coach Gomez for some, some clarity on the uh, uh, storage and the uh, the cold room and on the planting. You know, if anyone has any comments on or any concerns about the three hundred to three fifty, I think it's a good investment, solid investment for the, the manpower we can get, woman power we can get also. Um, in this vault in this volunteer group that, that Jose very much needs. And on uh, the first point on the can you scroll up a little bit. Yeah, the first point is the lease. You signed a lease. The sign this agreement, I think we, we went over needing to kind of everyone review, make comments, and we'll we'll do that um, on Monday. Hopefully Monday we we'll start moving forward, and uh, we'll do that outside of this meeting, though, I think. You know, everyone still needs some time to digest that. Is, sure. is someone representing Coach Gomez today? Well, well, hold on. Roger, um, or Jose, um, sure. on that lease agreement, I mean, right now you're at, at Canseco and, and we want you how, to be housed there, and that's fantastic. But I also want to let you know that if you get large enough that you need to expand and you need more land, we have Slaughter Park a Greenhouse uh, available. Anita is there uh, in, in, in the meeting here. Uh, that if you need to expand, I would suggest that we expand to the Canseco, I mean, to the Slaughter Park. Uh, there is a, an older building uh, back there uh, if, if that needs to probably be fixed up, but at least the gardens can be used. Uh, we can we can partition a section off uh, over there 
uh, I know that Berman was planting a bunch of stuff over there. And from there, we take to the different parks and plant the parks. Uh, but we have a large space to, to to make this garden grow even even bigger than what it is. Okay, that's important because I mean, let me go ahead and continue. It's important to know that almost all the produce that we have in setting it's it's only from Harmony plot. Harmony is our biggest plot. It's around two thousand square feet. But where I now we are going to start harvesting from other uh, other plots. But actually, almost all of our sales have been from from Harmony. So we, we still need to to plan in mindful and the other the other plots. So. I mean, at this point, I think we're on the, in the right path. We're getting there, so yeah, we are uh, eager to start planting for for spring. The, our total Canseco planting area is six thousand square feet, and we have I think we have almost pretty much the half of uh, half of it planted by now. Okay, so so far we have harvested cauliflower, broccoli, spinach, radishes, beets, strips, parsley, Toscano kale. Three different kind of scale, uh, tomatoes, uh, but at this point we still have something to offer. We have we still have spinach, carrots, kale, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, so And our plans for spring are to have rodeo tomato, cherry tomato, two kinds of onions, three kinds of potatoes, watermelon, sugar baby, cucumbers, melons, carrots, flowers, and, and lots of things. And just to wrap up my my report and. And final thoughts, uh, I think we are, we're having a good media, social media campaign, our work uh, and our social media is creating, are creating awareness in our community. Our community is starting to know us, to know our activities, our progress, and I think we need to keep them inspired. We have been noticing the past three weeks uh, some kind of customer loyalty because the same people that that attended the first uh, sale uh, keep going, right? They keep going uh, during the week and, and then Saturdays to buy something, uh, a bundle, a, a pound of mail, whatever, kale or carrots. And we have been receiving a lot of direct messages and even people are asking if we have uh, scheduled hours, which we don't really have because we don't have, uh, like, we don't have the office, we don't have the story from ready, so we don't have the schedule hours right now, but normally, normally there in the afternoons. Help you. And, and just kind of with, that, with that last comment about your thing, uh, what you're saying about the office and, and kind of these needs, um, let, can we set a meeting for maybe uh, next week, like on Wednesday, whoever would like to, to join that, um, to send me a message and email? I think uh, for sure, Jose and you know, Coach Gomez, it's, it's all me on, on Wednesday to once we get the comments from the board on Monday. Right now, one of the points that we have to bring up was uh, Jose needs an office. You know, he, he doesn't have an office there, and so um, it's hard to to really settle in. And so, okay. wanna we want to explore and, um, and and keep moving forward on this. Now we have some momentum. Uh, please include me in that meeting. I know that we have the the carriage house uh, as your office. I think there was issues with uh, water or seeping in or something like that. And we, I, I need to know what we there as quickly as possible. Awesome. Yeah. You might want to include you. Uh, Vivian. Um, and so you might want to include her. Coach Gomez was looking, was had solicited some quotes to fix the roof. Um, cause that I don't know if, if he was able to get those. I think. Anita, you can uh, forward some sort of uh, something for me so that. I will. Uh, we have been working on it. We're trying to do this in house with uh, other departments. And so hopefully, Public Works can jump in and assist and purchase the materials. Uh, the other thing.
issues in other areas. So staff is working on trying to fix those to temporarily. These are like uh, household refrigerators. They're not the commercial. Uh, that's on hold, obviously, because we don't want to damage the refrigerator, not putting it in, putting it into a building that's not ready. We need to get them uh, in working condition, and uh, we're thinking of putting them in the basement of the main house temporarily. Home to their house, you know, on a nightly basis. Okay. Also, I, I believe that. Uh, so, um, uh, um, thank you for bringing that up, Councilman, about that. Uh, again, at the forming of um, the. Uh, LCUAS uh, there was a one of the things that that the organization was uh, which I still think is viable right now, especially listening to the the uh, uh, executive director's comments is that the agriculture uh, garden or farm right, uh, it's a uh, 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 it can teach people how to do a business out of literally a fifth of an acre, you know. Basically, what you're doing is creating a membership for your garden or for your small farm, and you're selling. For LCUAS is, is that a lot of people just join just to help on box every two weeks, or you know, but maybe they'll uh, you can start. Because you think if for a membership, then pick these boxes, come and pick up your uh, boxes. If you can pick up your box every two weeks, but you can start a membership that way, and it will help, uh, you know, obviously provide uh, money for the organization. Uh, farm at the at the slaughter uh, uh, parkland that the that the councilman is talking about, um, and maybe it's run by the the uh, volunteers and actually create a business out of that. Learn how to create a business, a workshop, working tool for LCUAS. But at the very least, you can start, even with what you have now, you can start a membership program. I know people who just want to be part of, you know, this organization and will help by saying, oh, I get a couple of tomatoes out of it every, every month or a broccoli or something. I'll be happy, you know. I just love to say. They have a lot of goodwill in communities, so um, I think it would be a lot of goodwill in this community. All the boxes also uh, to the membership if, if you want. And uh, anyway, that's really what I wanted to say.
and that community engagement, you know, just integrates the community and really keeps the momentum going. So, um, I think, you know, it really makes it think, um, you know, board meetings. Um, that way, you know, it, keep, it keeps moving and we can get some sort of brain sessions, uh, brainstorming sessions out of this. Uh, You know, if you all have some ideas on that, what types of committees you'd like to create, please let me know so that we can make them, uh, you know, make them happen. For the board comments, I think we've, we've had a pretty good uh, session today. We've, um, I'd like to thank the councilman, uh, again, and the entire board. You know, thank you all for, for joining us today. And, you know, with that, I'd like to ask for... Something real quick, Roger. Just a question. Do we need to vote on the um, advisory committee for the council? No, that's something okay. that, that I can create based on a request. Okay. Is there any? Yeah. Um, Roger, I'm just going to ask you something. Yeah. Definitely. And, you know, welcome the entire board to do that. Um, it's, it's a great board membership onto the board to be fully integrated and have a lot of um, the opportunity to invite your network, people that you think that can contribute um, to please All right, well, with that, you know, I'd like to, uh, to adjourn the meeting. Uh, thank you all again very much for, for joining us. Incredibly productive. I'm looking forward to the next one. So that Jose can uh, start applying for grants and really um, create some good foundations uh, for, for this organization. So thank you all for, for such a productive meeting. Next meeting, February 25th. February 25th. Sorry, motion to uh, adjourn the meeting, please. I move to adjourn. Second.